Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. Let me first uh, congratulate my right honourable friend, the member for Bournemouth East, for uh, securing this debate, and also the right honourable member for Worley. Um, both uh, have extensive interest, long standing interest uh, in this uh, area. But I also pay tribute to the members of the House of Commons uh, Defence Committee for their work. Uh, and also, I would like to thank the Foreign Affairs Committee, the International Development Committee, for the scrutiny of my department's work and also for the contributions of both their chairs in tonight's debate and indeed the contribution from the chair of the International, sorry, of the, um, of the Intelligence and Security uh, Committee. Uh, the fact I'm joined on the front bench by my honourable friend, the member uh, for Horsham, where, I, where my wife has family, as he knows, uh, the honourable member for Horsham, the honourable member for Horsham uh, demonstrates the integrated uh, nature of this review as we have both a Defence Minister and a Foreign uh, Commonwealth and Development Officer uh, Minister. It's, it's an in-joke, Madam Deputy Speaker. He knows, he knows what I mean. Um, uh, time prevents me from addressing all the points raised in this debate, but I hope that during this speech I am able to cover most of them, if, if not all of them. The integrated uh, review is an ambitious and wide-reaching review, and the purpose of its integration is to examine every aspect of our international security, development and defence policy. And it's my pleasure to respond to this debate on behalf of the government. The government wants UK foreign policy to deliver for our people and be rooted firmly in our national interest. That is why the commitment to deliver a review of foreign, defence, security and development policy was announced in the Queen's speech in December 2019. As we said then, and as has been mentioned by my right honourable friend, the review is the most radical reassessment of our place in the world since the end of the Cold War. When published, the review will define the government's ambition for the UK's role in the world outline the way in which the UK will be a problem-solving, burden-sharing country, and set a strong direction for the recovery from COVID-19 at home and overseas, so that collectively we can build back better. I'm pleased to be able to tell the House that the government intends to publish the review in March. The government's original intention this year, the government's original intention was to publish the review in 2020. However, the House will agree it would have been wrong to set out the government's long-term international vision whilst we tackled the early stages of a global pandemic. Providing a full response to COVID-19 was and is the government's number one focus. And that is why it was right to pause the review uh, in the spring of last year. Work has, however, been ongoing, adapting to the ever-shifting geopolitical and geoeconomic context caused by COVID-19. The review has involved detailed horizon scanning, covering trends, opportunities, risks and threats. It has involved in, uh, evidence gathering and policy analysis and wide consultation with experts, academics and foreign partners. The Prime Minister, supported by the National Security Council, is personally leading the review. The Foreign Secretary chaired a cross-Whitehall ministerial small group to advise the Prime Minister. Civil servants from across Whitehall have worked to ensure that the review draws on the full range of expertise and skills available to government. And this demonstrates the integrated whole-of-government approach to this review, going further than the strategic defence and security reviews of the past. Our future strategy and approach to the challenges of the next decade will benefit from the collective might of our national security apparatus. And the government has also looked beyond Whitehall to incorporate the expertise of the nation, speaking to key people and organisations with an interest in our, nation, in our nation's security and prosperity. 
By reaching out in this way, we've ensured the best minds in the UK and beyond are feeding into the review's conclusions and challenging traditional Whitehall assumptions and thinking. The initial findings of the review are already informing our decision making. The announcement made in November's spending review were informed by the first phase of the integrated review and set us on the right path to deliver on our visions and priorities. The Prime Minister has already announced the first conclusions, the largest increase in defence spending since the Cold War, more than £24 billion over four years. This settlement is a signal of intent and heralds an era where we bolster our global influence. It ensures our armed forces have the necessary tools and equipment to defend the UK and its people, cement our place as a leader in NATO, and underpins our foreign policy and our ability to defend free and open societies. On international developments, changes to our ODA budget were driven by the economic impact of COVID and are temporary. And the Foreign Secretary has set out the core principles where we will sharpen our focus this year to ensure the maximum impact for our aid budget. The Government has signalled its intention to deepen involvement in the Indo-Pacific and has started to take steps in that direction. Last week, we submitted the Notification of Intent Letter to begin the comprehensive and progressive agreement for Trans-Pacific Partnership Accession Process. Now, the creation of the Foreign, Commonwealth and Development Office itself was an act of integration, uniting development and diplomacy into one department, bringing together Britain's international efforts to have an even greater positive impact and influence on the world stage. Madam Deputy Speaker, let me end by saying that this is the opportunity to define and strengthen our place in the world. The integrated review will send a message about what the UK stands for as an independent actor on the global stage and how we will back this up with action to secure our interests and also to defend our values. The world has not stood still and neither have we. The UK endures as an active global leader. In the past year alone, we have led the global efforts to deliver a vaccine, raising $8.8 billion for Gavi through our hosting of the Global Vaccine Summit. We've demonstrated global leadership in tackling climate change, including doubling our international climate finance contribution to help millions around the world and pushed back on those who would attack our values through new bespoke immigration routes for British national overseas status holders. This, Madam Deputy Speaker, is Global Britain. The integrated review will build on this, setting out our vision for the next decade, based on our values and grounded in the UK national interest. We will announce the full conclusions of the integrated review in March, unleashing our independent foreign policy outside the European Union as we launch our presidencies of the G7 and of COP26. Madam Deputy Speaker, 2021 will be a year of leadership for global Britain as a force for good in the world. Tobias Elwood to wind up. Thank you very much, Madam Deputy Speaker. This is a minute for me to say thank you to all those who participated and the Minister for uh, responding. He mentioned COVID-19 and the pandemic power contribution. I look forward to seeing HMS Argos repeat what it did with the Ebola and, and helping other nations, making sure that we get that vaccinations out. I hope he might be able to take that forward. But let me thank all those who did contribute. Three themes arose, I think, from this debate. Firstly, a real desire for Britain to play a more active role on the international stage, be one of those nations that step forward when others hesitate. Secondly, invest in our soft and hard power. Don't cut the army by 10,000. Yeah. Don't cut our aid budget uh, down from 0 0.7. And thirdly, publish the review. He gave a month. Yeah, I noticed he didn't give a year or a, a day. I presume it's 2021. We very much look forward to that. 
the US has stepped forward as a nation to